That's good enough. Let's go. This is Aprilist Fool. Um, this is my video video game um, that I made last night. Uh, yeah, this is a text adventure. Um, I made this. I was uh, I started around like twelve twelve thirty at night. Um, oh yeah, I'll wait till you're done. To start. Um, yeah, I, I waited um, pretty much like all day, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a video jam. And um, pretty much what happened is I stayed up till six thirty in the morning working on it, and here we are. This is April List Fool, and it's really short and it's really stupid, but I love it, and it's really hacked together. If you could see the code that I wrote, it's it's absolute garbo, but it works. It works, and that's that's it's all all you need for a game, really. It just kind of has to work, and that's kind of the bare minimum. And, uh, that's, that's that. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. It's cut off for some reason. Why is it cut off? Okay. Let's go to Newgrounds. It's on Newgrounds too. Yay! I hate that. I don't know why it's cut off. It's just, like... I've been having so many issues starting this up. Okay. Let's just, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna do some of that. There we go. And on the newest of grounds, we find ourselves. I'm just, that's good enough. Okay. Let's do it. The sun was leaping from the windowsill and filling the room with an angelic ambiance. A lovely Friday morning is beckoned through the windows and into your perfectly still bedroom. As the morning rays kiss your eyelids with the daint of a cloud, you're greeted by your ceiling fan as your brain begins to realize that your day has just begun. You sit, erect in your bed, and listen to the bird song chiming through the drafty air seal of the window. It's very strange to have a boner right now, you acknowledge. But yet one cannot be blamed for the morning. We yield our agency to the sweet release of sleep. Therefore, the state in which we wake is up to the whim of God. God gave you this erection, and you're just going to have to deal with that. You feel blissful. Alas, your bliss is interrupted by a strange yet familiar feeling. A feeling from within the depths of their psyche, forged by your feral ancestors. The pollen from the fluorescent trees just beyond your window assumes your nose. The turquoise sky twinkles. The verdant trees vacillate. Your penis is not the only thing that has sprung, but spring as well. Alright gang, what are we gonna do? What, what should we do first? Um, I think we should probably check our phone. Um, I also don't know how big the delay is on this, so I'm kind of, kind of testing that out right now. Okay, well, I'm going to check the phone. Um, alright, you look over in your nightstand. Your phone is plugged into the wall with a flimsy cable, screen side down. Let's inspect it. Yeah, let's go, let's go check out our laptop. Meh. You don't even know, uh, need to look to know that you didn't plug in your laptop either last night. Alright. As you adjust yourself to look over at your calendar, that was the last thing we could do. As you adjust yourself to look over at your calendar, you see a red circle of your own design taunting you. Within the circle would lie a vigorous ocean crashing into the shore of your sanity. It was that time of year again. April Fool's Day. Panic. We're gonna panic. You began to feel quite frank or sorry sorry you began to quite frankly lose your shit a bit. You are to your chagrin regarded by your peers as what can only be delicately described as a turbo deeb nerdo piss baby. You're a sorcerer and April Fool's Day is a witch hunt. That was originally uh, originally supposed to say dweeb, but I typed uh deeb and I rolled with it and I think I I used it a second time so it's just deeb now. 
To think this reputation had befallen you because of a pants-shitting, fist-suppositing, life-affirming middle school prom proposal. You were so in love with Jess Chagall, and then David Shaw happened. He just came up behind you and, well, the rest is history. You'll always have the anal fissures to keep you humble, so why torture yourself with painful memories? Alright, let's focus. You ground yourself back in the present and come to terms with the reality that all day today, you will need to avoid your peers, your classmates, maybe even Mrs. Harmon. The point is, no one can be trusted. Let's look at the clock. It's time to leave for school. There's nothing else you can do about your predicament. Let's, um... Let's see, what should we do? Let's get, let's get some input. Should we stay home from school, or should we kind of, should we scope out the scene? Waiting for the lag to catch up. We love it. Oh man, I wonder where we even are on the stream. Yeah, okay. School is for squares. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's stay home. And what, get hung by Brent? It's bad enough that he already took away your Xbox Live Gold. He's not even your real dad, even though mom makes you call him that. If he didn't go to school, it'd be bad news for you. But either way, you're dead meat, I guess. Still the right thing to do. Right? It's really time to leave for school. You've tried everything. Alright, let's go. Your sister isn't mean enough to prank you, probably. You know your parents can't prank you right now. Your mom is on a business trip, as Brent is just so, so boring. Mean, but boring. Even though he's an alpha male, he's relatively quiet and doesn't really fuck with you as long as you don't fuck with him. Like a bee. Kind of weird how emotionally stunted he is, though. Like, why are they called alpha males when they're incapable of being transparent? Uh, let's look out the window. You peer out the window and see some of your fellow classmates standing outside your house with their backpacks on. It looks like Mutsugawa, Whateverson, and Jonas Malik. They're laughing, turned away from you as their backs heave and hoe with volume. They're holding what appears to be... rope? And a cowboy hat? It's already started. It's really already starting, and you have only just changed out of your pajamas. Alright. We're gonna yell at them. You open your window, slamming it hard enough to make the two boys whip their heads around. Hey, you shriek. I'll fucking kill you, assholes. They tear off, sprinting down the street as they laugh their heads off. Freak, one of them calls, snickering as they run down the street. A familiar face emerges from the front of the house, staring at you, uh, staring up at you with a graceful gaze as to say, What the fuck, dude? Hi, Audrey. You meekly proclaim. Your sister looks pretty miffed. Can you just not spaz out for today? She pleads. Hoping to explain your rational fear, you butted. But they... Dude, just chill, okay? I'm leaving. I'll see you later or not. She begins to back away. Just... Chill. Chill, right. You got this. Let's go about the, the go out the back door. You head down the stairs, through the kitchen, and out the side door. There's no one on the side of the street your fence connects to. You're safe. So let's, let's, let's get out of here. You exit through the gate and begin to plot your next course of action in your mind. If you were to take your normal route to school, you'd find yourself vulnerable, like a duck. Not a sitting one, just, just a normal duck. You have two route options, neither of which is faster than the other. So yeah, we have two things we could do. We could we could go the direction of the Fast Easy Mart, or we could go to the Nightmare 365 outlet. Um, so I think we'll wait. We'll wait a sec to see what uh, what everybody wants to do here. Um, yeah. And while we're at it, how are we all doing today? This is um, my first time posting a game on Newgrounds. It's weird. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Let's go to the Nightmare Outlet. You break off in the direction of the year-round Halloween costume outlet store, Nightmare Three Sixty Five. Maybe you can pick up a disguise. 
As you approach the store, you notice a myriad of both fantasy and real life costumes. Maybe a nerd costume on top of your natural nerdiest could result, could result in a pretty solid costume. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a cowboy hat. It's a costume store, and of course there's going to be cowboy hats. Oh, thanks. I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, wait, I already asked you how you're doing. Well, I'm sorry today was whack, but I'm glad you're having a good time. But through the gap under the shelves, you see a rope dragging on the floor. How did they get here so fast? Did they follow you, or do they know a shortcut? Jonas is going to kill you, like really, really kill you. Jonas Malik has been to Juvie, you, th you think. Maybe he just got suspended. You're not really sure. He's a bad seed, though, is the point. There's no sign of Mutsu. Let's attack Jonas. Let's, let's get the advantage. You climb the shelving, separating you and the cowboy, and begin to claw wildly at the rowdy sheriff. Only, even though the blood dripping from your victim's eyelids and your fingernails, you realize this isn't Jonas. Oh, even through the blood dripping, sorry. Uh, you realize this isn't Jonas. You just mauled Mr. Graymore, your ready-to-mingle middle-aged math teacher with three college-aged daughters. He does not recognize you, as the blood obscures his eyes. Time to run away. Let's, let's go. Going by the convenience store probably yield the least attention. It's worth a shot, at least. You head down the sidewalk. Having not seen a soul on the way there, you notice a very familiar buzz cut glistening in the morning sun. Shit, it's him again, Mutsugawa Thompson? You can never remember that guy's name. He's an asshole, so it's fine. He's just standing there. He doesn't have the rope, so Malik must have it. Or maybe it's in his backpack? Where's Malik? Mutsu doesn't seem to notice you yet. There's no time to waste on silly thoughts like this. Let's get real. It's time to get down to business. In reality, there are really two options here. You can either turn back, or you can take Mutsu out. Mutsu will see you go in the store... But Jonas is nowhere to be found. Maybe he's inside? Either way, the chances of taking out Mutsu while he's on his own are more in your favor than waiting for Jonas to show up. Let's attack Mutsugawa. That son of a damn antelope isn't going to stop hunting you if you're just going to let yourself remain his prey. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Is that from something? Probably not. You consider yourself a pretty creative individual with a quick wit. Like lightning. Come on, man. Focus. Right. Focus. You strut across the street like you're some kind of badass. Hey, you dumb fuck! <laughs> Mutsu whips his head around and stares at you, bewildered at the events unfolding before his eyes. This piss baby is just so confident right now. Uh, so we can yell at him, we can French kiss him, or we can bash his head in the storefront window. So I am actually going to wait for the, uh, for, uh, the chat to catch up for this, because I think... I think this is a this is definitely a decision. All right, we want to French him. Yeah, let's let's French him. All right, we're gonna we're gonna French Mutsugawa. Come here, you hunk of garbage! You strut towards Mutsugawa and place your hands on his collarbones. You lean in for a kiss. Mutsugawa pushes you back forcefully, but not aggressively. Bro, come on now. You know I'm into your sister. I can't be kissing up all on you like that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Mutsu likes Audrey? Weird. That sucks. Time to run away. Fuck you, you say. Oh, fuck you. You say emotionless, uh, emotionless, emotionlessly as you flee the scene. Well, today has been stressful. You feel out of your fucking mind, actually. Uh, just so you know, that was a, that was like a conditional text, uh, where it's like, today has been stressful, and if you do, like, normal person shit, like, you don't just go, like, Frenching people and, like, clawing at people's faces, like, it'll be like, but you've been managing, but if you do, like, insane shit, it'll be like, you're out of your fucking mind. So that, that's what that was, we're, we're out of her mind. Um... How are you to avoid being made the fool on this most April of Fool's Days? Did that joke work? You're not quite sure. Tough crowd, or not. You don't know. You still can't believe Mutsu likes Audrey. Like, ew. I wonder if they're in cahoots over this cowboy prank business. I wonder what's in it for the three of them. If they really are trying to prank me. Part of you really can't believe it. That part of you is weak. You're sure of that. 
you can't trust anyone. You have to take care of the problem at its source. Let's go back to Fast Easy Mart. You return to the Fast Easy Mart hastily. Jonas and Mutsu are around the corner of an alleyway, sipping what seems to be their 13th tall boy this morning. There's a very over-it-looking cop talking to the both of them. We're gonna grab the cop's gun. We have no other option. It's time to take action. You lunge forward and grab the policeman's gun from behind. Oh, there's a typo. Shit. You point it at Mutsu and Jonas. You can't make me an April Fool, you son of a goddamn weasel! You chuckle. Ha ha ha! What are you talking about, Mutsu is, uh, whimpers? I, I didn't see you on April Fool's Day. You cock the gun. Do you see me now? <laughs> you scream from the gallows of your vocal cords. Mutsu begins to cry. It's April 2nd! It's April 2nd! It's April 2nd? Saturday? There was no school today? This was all for nothing? You pranked yourself? Just as you switch back to focusing in reality, you feel a blunt object hit the back of your head. It felt as though it were the size, shape, and weight of a police baton. You hit the ground, chuckling to yourself as your vision turns black. Game over. That was the bad ending. There's two endings. Uh, I guess it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. I mean, like, we, we did pretty good, but... There's, there's two endings. Um, the other one is when you do, like, normal shit. Um, you realize your phone has been charged um, all day. Because, um, you know, we saw it was dead in the morning. Um, but... You, it, it's actually, it was charged and Audrey calls you and um, Mutsu and Jonas are at the convenience store to get beer for a party at your house um, that Audrey's inviting you to and that's the good ending and then you're like, shit, I pranked myself but this one, you're like about to kill somebody like you went like full full, um, I don't know, you just went full something, but yeah, um, that's it, that's the Aprilist Fool, um, if you want to play it, it's, um, I'll put links in the description of this video, um, I forgot to do that before I started the stream, um, but yeah, that's it, I, I really hope you enjoyed, alright, bye, <laughs> I don't know how to end these things ever,